Manchester is a place of great change. In the 19th century, the railway builders built their new Manchester Victoria station across a graveyard, a river, and some of the city's oldest housing. Manchester Victoria isn't quite as it seems. The concourse is built in such a way that it straggles over the River Irk, which joins the Irwell about a quarter of a mile away. At the end of the station concourse, where the metro trams leave the railway to cross Corporation Street, there was once a short siding where the fish trains from Fleetwood would unpack their frozen wares ready to be delivered to Manchester's fishmongers. This picture, taken in the 1970s, clearly shows the location of the fish dock. It was here in 1973 that a remarkable discovery was made. Engineers working on a possible underground railway extension discovered the remains of three tunnels leading from the direction of Corporation Street towards the fish dock. Access to the tunnels was incredibly difficult, as the inset picture clearly shows. The tunnels were cut through the soft red sandstone and supported in part by brick arches. However, much of the site had been backfilled with rubble and it was difficult to work out exactly what was going on. In one of the side passages, the extent of the backfill can clearly be seen under one of the brick support arches. Look carefully at the red sandstone at the back of the arch and the pick marks made by the original tunnelers can clearly be seen. The tunnels nearest to Corporation Street were also blocked with debris. The engineers had shored up the roof of the chamber for safety reasons and unfortunately many of the minor features had been destroyed in the process. The discovery of two cast iron slewing plates on the floor of one of the tunnels was a surprise. What were they used for? There was also a rope cut groove in the corner of one of the support pillars and two inches of coal on the floor near where the slewing plates were found. The tunnels predate the construction of Manchester Victoria Station in the 19th century and would have led directly to the then bank of the River Irk. The nearby River Irwell carried a great deal of boat traffic and it's likely the Irk was also navigable to this point. The conjecture is there was probably a wooden landing stage in the river leading into the tunnels. On an estate document dated 1792, an open area of land is marked. The document states that it shows the release of a suff or watercourse into the Irk, which suggests it was used for drainage. The first edition on the survey map drawn up in 1849 also shows a blank, unoccupied parcel of land. There would seem to be a very definite reason for not building on that land. The current thinking is that it was originally a watercourse that drained into the Irk. As Manchester developed in the 19th century, it was used to transport material and goods into the city. The slew plates, rope marks and coals suggest sledges were used to haul goods from the riverside. Later it was all backfilled and abandoned when the railway company built Manchester Victoria Station. In one of the arches of the Victoria Station viaduct, the slope of the original riverbank can still be seen. It's shallow at this point, but would have probably formed a low cliff at the water's edge. Today the River Irk travels in darkness beneath Victoria Station, and access is impossible. The tunnels too are now sealed and flooded. We conclude our visit to the tunnels and the River Irk by looking back to a time when the Irk was a delightful pleasant river with a few water-powered fulling mills along its course. It was greatly regarded for the quality of its eels, which were eaten with enthusiasm by local people. They're nice and fat, said one local. Because of the fat from the wool, it gets into the river from the fulling mills, and it makes them so.